Test driven development is best characterized by red green refactor. So in order to practice this discipline, we require three distinct different mindsets. Most people new to this discipline don't get one of these right. So let's try and explore what it takes to do all three better. When we talk about red-green refactor in the context of test room development, what we're really describing is a little mini process. We're describing a discipline that we can adopt and apply to the practice of test room development that's going to give us a better outcome. Let's just describe that process so that we're all on the same page in terms of what we're talking about. We start with red. The idea here is that we want to start begin any piece of work by writing an automated test. And we need to understand whether that test is correct, whether it's going to first specify the behavior in the way that we're interested in, and then does it actually work? Does the, does the test actually test anything? It's surprising how many tests, if you remove the code that's under test, will still give a positive result. That's not helpful. So we'd like to be able to write our test in a way that we can run it, see it fail, and, and see it fail in a predictable way. That's red. The next stage is now we'd like to do the minimum amount of work that we can in order to make the test pass. While the test is failing, we are in an unstable state, and so what we'd like to do is that we'd like to do the minimum amount of work, the smallest number of steps, in order to get back to a stable state where the test is passing. So we're going to do, we're going to do some simple changes to get back to that passing state. That's green. And one of the stages that most people miss in test and development is the idea of refactoring. We've done the simplest thing that could possibly work as part of achieving a stable position in terms of a passing test. So now we need to refactor the design of our test and the design of our system under test in order to make sure that they're elegant and nice to work in and well factored and the design is evolving in the direction that we intend it to. And so refactoring is a vital final step in the whole process. In order to practice this approach, we need to apply three distinct different mindsets. We need to be thinking differently about the system under test and the test that we are writing in each stage. So let's explore that in a bit more detail. So red, the first stage. Our objective here is to achieve a good quality passing test. Now, what we'd like to do is that we'd like to make our lives as easy as possible. As a, uh, as a test writer, my objective is to, as clearly as I can, specify the behavioural intent of my code. I'd like to describe, I'd like to capture a little executable specification for the behaviour of my code in code that's easy for me to parse and simple for me to understand. What that allows me to do then is to build up these tests that, that capture the intent of my code and describe it, it from a behavioural point of view. This is true even at the fine-grained level of design of a, of a test-driven development unit test. Um, in order to achieve that, it means that I've got to take seriously the design of the interface to my code. I don't want my test to be compromising the, the, the encapsulation of my code. I don't want to be putting any secret backdoors into my code in order to get test results out. That means that my code needs to be testable, whatever testable means. I would argue that testable code is modular, it's loosely coupled, it has a good separation of concerns, it has high cohesion and it exhibits information hiding. So those are ideas that I want to be in the back of my mind when I'm designing, uh, designing my code. And when I'm writing my test at the red stage, my thought is really wholly about the design of my code and how I can write this test as concisely and simply and expressively as possible in order to achieve those ends. So I am really designing the public interface to my code in order to make my life as a test writer simple. The side effect of that is that as a test writer, I'm just one case of a user of my code. It means that if, I, if my code is nice and easy to use in the context of a test, it's going to be nice and easy to use in the context of any other usage of that code. 
it's going to be nicer for somebody else to take on my code and incorporate it with their own or even for me to take my code and use it in other parts of the design. So focusing on the test and making a writable test is an important step in trying to achieve a really elegant design. So let's start looking at a simple example. This is, this is the idea of adding fractions and this is a coding carta that I, I sometimes play with in, in, in training courses and for my own benefit. And the idea is to simply write some code that will allow us to add two fractions together. Um, and the first thing that we want to start with as ever in test driven development is a test case. So here's my test template and I like to start the name of each test case with the word should. That's a BDD idea which is supposed to put you into the right frame of mind to express a behavioural intent rather than some after the fact thinking about testing. It's hard to make a sentence in English that begins with the word should that doesn't really lead you towards some describing an intended behaviour of the system. So in this case, so should add, so what's the simplest fractions that we can imagine adding together? And the simplest fraction that I can think of is a fraction that represents a whole number, a fraction where the denominator is one. And so uh, integer fractions. So let's start there. And if we're going to add fractions, the first thing that springs to my mind is we're going to need a fraction. So what I'm thinking about at this stage is how can I best express this behavioural intent, the, the desire to be able to add two integer fra fractions to one another, how can I best express that simply and concisely in my test case? And that's all that's in my mind. I'm not trying to imagine how the fractions work or anything else like that. I'm only thinking in the context of this test case. And for that, I'm going to want a fraction. I'm, I'm, I need a fraction of some kind in order to be able to add it. So I'm going to need a piece of code that does something like this. If only I could type. And let's say we want a fraction with a value of three. That seems like a reasonable starting point. As yet, I don't have a fraction. And so the first thing that I need to do in order to make this code compile is to create a new fraction class. And I don't want that in there. I want that in my main code because that's the code that I'm trying to evolve through test driven development. There's my fraction class. Update this a little bit. Uh, and let's go back to my test. Right, so that still doesn't compile. I need a constructor for my fraction class. So I can create a constructor int uh, numerator. That's going to be the numerator for my class, for my fraction. And I want to create a field to represent the numerator in my code. So there's my, there's my fraction class. That's now going to compile my test. All that test looks okay now so far. So now in order to finish this test case we need an assertion and what we're trying to achieve is that we're trying to first we want to be able to run this test and see it fail. We want, we want to do the red green refactor thing and so we need an assertion that's going to make sense in the context of my test case. Should be able to add integer fractions but in this case it's going to fail when we run it the first time. So assert equals and if we're adding integer fractions, let's say we're going to get a result back. I'm thinking ahead slightly. We're going to want reports that are that can represent fractions with you know proper fractions and fractions with whole numbers in them in future and stuff like this. So for the sake of this, let's let's say we're going to have a string value return of some kind so that we can represent we can have a human readable form of a fraction. We're going to take the fraction that we just created uh, and we're going to add. And we're going to add that to a, what we're going to add this fraction to, we're going to add it to a new fraction. So I want a new fraction is what we want. And we're dealing with integers. We've said we wanted seven. We've got one that's three. So this one's going to be four. And if we're getting those back, I think 
time ago. I think that looks pretty good. So that's a good starting point. Let's create that method in our fraction. We're going to return a string. That's a fraction. And we could just run it like that. I don't like nulls very much. So let's just put an empty string in. That kind of finishes the behavioral contract of our, of our fraction class. Here's our test case. Um, we've got a new fraction that's with a value of 3, we've got a fraction with a value of 4, we're going to add those together and we're expecting a, a result of 7 in some form. If we run this now, what's going to happen? We're going to get an error report that says we expected to get 7 but actually got an empty string. So that's the that's my expected failure. I always like to predict the nature of the failure that I I'm going to get from my test case because that's a way of working a little bit more experimentally. So now I'm going to run the test case and expected 7, actual was empty, so that's exactly what I predicted. So that's good. The next stage, green, is that I want to get from an unstable position, that of a failing test, to a stable position, that of a passing test. I want to do that as quickly and with the smallest, simplest steps that I can achieve um, uh, to get there. So what does that take? Now we need to be thinking tactically. What we're trying to do is how can I make changes to my code that are just enough to make the test pass? I want to consciously try and eliminate my design thinking at this stage. I, I, I want to just do the smallest number of steps. Steps. It's useful to think, how can I write the, small, the, the fewest characters in order to achieve this? How can I do the, the, the least number of changes? And so I'm going to write some fairly naive code at this, this point. I'm going to be doing the tactical things. I might be hard coding return values simply to make a test pass. I might be doing things that I don't like in the design of my code in order to just get to the, in, in, through a few simple steps to this stable passing state. Once I am in that state, I can move on to the next. So now we can go and make the test pass. So how do we make the test pass? Well, we want a string, and we'll do a value of thing, and we're going to do this.numerator plus that.numerator this and that. That's the names. And that seems okay. That's the simplest step that I can think of. So, so I've moved on now. I, I, I've done the red part. I've seen my test fail and I've kind of designed the interface to my fraction. I've now moved on. I'm working on the green part. So I'm trying to get to a stable position where my uh, my test is passing. And I want to make the smallest changes that I can think of at this stage. I don't want to be designing too clever. I don't want to be too clever. I already know I don't like this code very much, but that's okay. At this stage, I'm not going to do anything smart. I'm trying to get the, the fastest route to solving this problem. And I think this might be it. So I, we had our test running before with an empty string. I think that's going to give us the answer to our calculation. So I think that if I rerun the test case now, I think this should pass, and indeed it does. That's good. The last of my three mindsets is refactoring. We are, we've, we've done the red stage, we've seen the test fail, we've done the green stage, we've got it to a stable point where it's passing. Now I can, at my own leisure, design, improve the design of my tests, improve the design of my code, refactor the tests and the code to be more elegant, to be more expressive, to be simpler, to improve the separation of concerns, all of those good things, to end up with uh, the highest quality results that I can. Through these activities, this is how I get to the point of evolutionary design. So, here's our test, here's our code. Let's do the third step in TDD and think about refactoring. So first, is there anything in here that we'd like to change. There is something that I'd like to change. Um, and it's going to hit both of these things. I'm going to come back to the test later on, but we'll start from here. I don't like this add method. 
And I don't like this ad method because I think it's an example of poor design. This is poor separation of concerns. This ad method is both adding the fractions and doing a string conversion. And that's not good. That's not good code. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to change this so instead of returning a string, I return a fraction. And that means I'm going to do a new fraction. Okay, so my calculation is still in place. I've got a new fraction. That's a simple step. It's all good, except I need a string at the end. So I've got to have a... Uh, I've got to, I need a punk to string method. Uh, I've got to be able to convert this to a string. And what are we doing with the string? We're going to do string dot value of this dot numerator. So after the after we've done everything, it's just the value of the numerator that we're displaying at the moment. I think that's. Good. It's, I, I much prefer that code. Much better separation of concerns. Uh, let's go back to our fraction test. There's a problem here because this is ex assert equals is expecting a string, and at the moment we're returning a fraction, so I'm going to do a two string there. And now I'm going to run my test case again. I expect it to stay green. I expect it to pass, and it does. The combination of these three mindsets is important. It means that we start to establish this little feedback loop uh, between us, the developer, the tests that we are writing, and the system under tests that we are, that, that we are trying to evolve. And that allows us to grow our understanding, the quality of the tests, and the, the quality of the system under test without too tightly coupling any of those things. It means that the tests that we write, because we are writing them first, are less likely to be fragile in the face of the change of the system. They are focused on expressing the behavioural intent of the code and only that. They've also allowed us to design this ele more elegant interface to, to interact with our code and so hopefully our code will be more pleasant to use in other contexts. By, by shortcutting what we're going to do next, we minimise the risk of going off and compromising our thinking earlier and, and we produce a simple uh, passing result. And once we are in that stable position, we can then switch to our more strategic thinking and refactor the whole and come up with an elegant solution to the problem that we, have, that we understand. Combined, this is an incredibly powerful technique. Combined, test-driven development as a whole can give more than orders of magnitude reduction in defect counts. But this approach specifically, I find incredibly useful in terms of not just the quality of the code from a tested point of view, but also in terms of the quality of the designs that we produce. And for me at least, that's what I value most of all about test-driven development. So Red, focus only on the behaviour of your code and the design of its public interface. Green, focus on the fewest, simplest steps to get the test passing again. Refactor, focus on producing the most beautiful, elegant outcome in terms of the design of your solution.